Today, we are talking about autoimmunity because we count on our immune system to protect us from germs and from bugs. It's constantly fighting every sneeze, every cough, every touch of the supermarket cart. Super gross. It's on the defense and it's strong because it keeps us alive. But for some of you, this defense, this shield turns inwards and starts attacking your body. For those of you with autoimmune disease, that's what's happening. Your immune system has its wires crossed and is now attacking your own body. Your body is the war zone. Autoimmunity is when the body attacks the self. Auto means self. And more and more people are suffering from autoimmune issues. So today we're going to take a deep dive into what it is, what causes it, and how we can manage it. If you're on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. And when you comment, we actually read all those comments. We may not respond to all of them, but we are definitely reading them. And if you're listening to the podcast, today is like a rainbow sweatshirt kind of day because rainbow. And of course, if you aren't already following us on Instagram or TikTok, what are you waiting for? And don't forget about our totally free new method course series. It's totally free. You can access an entire library of my courses. Absolutely free. Just go on our website, thenewmethod.com and get your free access. Let's start with autoimmunity. What is autoimmunity? You know, I always like to start with definitions. So autoimmunity is, you know, the immune system, as I said earlier, is designed to protect the body. It identifies and eliminates the harmful pathogens, the bad guys, the bacteria, the viruses, the other foreign invaders. And it does this through a really complex network of cells and tissues and organs that work together to recognize a foreign substance and neutralize it or remove it. However, in autoimmunity, this protective system goes haywire. It's like a glitch in the system. Normally, your immune system can tell the difference between self and non-self. But with autoimmunity, this line of communication breaks down. And this miscommunication causes your immune system to malfunction. Instead of only targeting foreign invaders, your immune system starts attacking your own cells and tissues, mistaking them for a threat. And this mistake results in the disorder that we call autoimmune disease. Now, there's all kinds of autoimmune disease, right? There's like 80 recognized autoimmune diseases. But let's talk about some of the common ones. Rheumatoid arthritis. That means the immune system is targeting your joints on your hands, your wrists, your knees, leading to painful swelling. Systemic lupus. Lupus means your immune system is actually attacking a lot of organs, leading to a wide range of symptoms from rashes to joint pains to kidney issues to fatigue. Inflammatory bowel disease, IBD, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis. This can affect any part of your GI tract, but usually the intestines. And again, it's the body attacking the intestines and it causes chronic diarrhea, rectal bleeding, abdominal pain, weight loss. Multiple sclerosis, MS, is an autoimmune issue. And that's when the immune system attacks the protective covering of nerves, causing communication problems between the brain and the body. Type 1 diabetes, type 1 diabetes. That's when the immune system attacks and destroys insulin-producing cells in the pancreas. Psoriasis, that skin rash that you think is your skin, it's actually a systemic issue where the immune system causes the skin cells to multiply rapidly, leading to these red, itchy, like scaly patches. Hashimoto's thyroiditis. A lot of you out there have Hashimoto's. That's when the immune system attacks the thyroid, leading to hypothyroid. The thyroid doesn't produce enough hormones. And the opposite of that is Graves' disease, right? The immune system still attacking the thyroid, but now leading to an overproduction of thyroid, hyperthyroidism. Celiac disease is another one. I know we think of it often as just genetic, but it's actually a response, an immune response to gluten, and that damages the lining of the cells, leading to difficulty of absorbing nutrients and GI symptoms. Like I said, there's over 80 recognized autoimmune issues. So what causes autoimmunity. Okay, we understand what it is. It's this attack on self. What causes it? So for autoimmunity, here's kind of the recipe. You need genetics, a trigger, and inflammation. So you have the genetic code for it, but something has to turn it on. And then it keeps going. We To keep going, we need that constant inflammation to kind of simmer and cook it. So that means we have the genes for this disease probably since the day we're born, but something triggers it. This is why so many of you will come to me and say, I was fine until, right? I was, everything was fine until a certain point. And they could point to that moment of that trigger. And sometimes it's one obvious trigger, like an infection. We'll talk about triggers in a moment. But sometimes it's a chronic exposure to a trigger over time that takes you down slowly. So let's go over some of these triggers. Infections. Infections are a biggie. 
when things are working fine, when we catch an infection, it sets off an alarm on our body's defense system. And normally that's good. The immune system comes in and fights, gets rid of the thing and moves on. But sometimes it fights the fight, but that activates the autoimmune gene as well. Some known ones are, right, COVID, long COVID. So many people are not okay after COVID. So, And so many people will say, I never had an autoimmune issue until I had COVID. But it's also true for H. pylori, which is a really common bacteria in your gut. Also for strep, especially with kids, it could lead to something called pandas. It's a pediatric neuropsychiatric disorder, all starting from strep throat. And sometimes it's a chronic infection like Lyme that's there for years without knowing. It's like this subtle, constant infection. And the list doesn't end there. This can happen literally just about any infection of a virus or bacteria. It could be your trigger. An infection can also stay hidden in your body, right? Like what I said about with Lyme. And these sneaky invaders, they become dormant. They hide within our cells. And our immune system knows something's going wrong. And it keeps our body in a slight state of alert, causing inflammation. And that over time, this constant alert can tire out our immune system. And our body keeps making these chemicals that cause inflammation, which wears out our immune defenses and makes it hard to stop the inflammation when it's no longer needed. Now, it's not only infection, right? It could also be exposure to toxins. And one really obvious toxin is smoking. Like if you're still smoking, what are we doing? Okay. If you're smoking, you're constantly breathing in chemicals. Smoking is linked to a lot of autoimmune issues. Like there's a huge link between smoking and rheumatoid arthritis. But let's also talk about, so smoking is an obvious one, but let's talk about a less obvious one like mold. And I did a whole episode about this, so go check it out. Mold is everywhere. And most of us are fine around it, right? Most of us, we don't even know what's around But for those of us with autoimmune issues, this could be a trigger. You could be living with mold or working with mold for years. And at first, your body can detox it and manage it. But eventually, this daily assault takes a toll. And eventually, the body loses fight. It gets overburdened. Other things that can trigger when we're talking about environmental toxins, pesticides, mercury, chemicals, all of this can trigger an autoimmune issue. Think about it like Your body's a bucket and it can only hold so much water. Your body can only hold a certain amount of toxins because we're exposed to them all the time. But these toxins aren't just one bad thing. It can be lots of different things you're exposed to every day. So every time you're near those toxins, a little bit goes in the bucket. And usually your body is good at dealing with this. It has its own cleaning crew, its own detox crew, and it does it every day, all day, 24-7. But if you're around too many toxins, the bucket starts to fill up faster and faster and the cleanup crew can't handle it. This accumulation of toxins puts your immune system on high alert, causing it to really work hard, constant state of you know high alert. And essentially, your immune system is stuck in a constant loop, working tirelessly to manage just the toxins. And just like anything, any guard that's overworked, anybody that's overworked and doesn't get enough rest, the immune system eventually becomes tired and worn out And that is when the glitches start to happen, right? Because these toxins are piling up. So in short, it doesn't have to be one specific toxin. Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's like the mold or, or the chemical. I had someone who worked in dry cleaning for a really long time. It was one specific chemical that accumulated. But for many of us, it could be a cumulative effect of things we're exposed to over time. So sometimes I hear stories where, oh, it's really clear I had this strep infection. I went to this moldy basement. But sometimes when I hear client stories, it's actually a slow buildup of kind of like lava that eventually erupts into a chronic condition. So while I talk about those, I don't want to underplay the importance of stress, right? Stress is also another trigger of autoimmunity. Some of my clients will say, ever since the divorce, ever since the death of my loved one, Ever since, you know, I I don't know, something intense happened and I lost my job, I went bankrupt. That stress has a real chemical impact on your body. And if your cup, your bucket is already full to the brim, this one event can send you over the edge. Okay, so that's the triggers, right? Genetic triggers, inflammation. Let's talk about inflammation, right? Because inflammation is the body's fire alarm. It's a signal that something isn't right. Remember, when inflammation is doing this job, that's good. It'll help, you know, bring the affected area, the healing, you know, soldiers that it needs to fight the infections. But what we're talking about is chronic, low-level inflammation that is cooking for years. The kind that gives you all kinds of weird symptoms, but every time you go to your medical provider, they tell you you're fine. 
That's the inflammation I'm talking about. Now, some of the things that I just talked about, these infections, these toxins, they bring inflammation with them, right? Like if you have chronic Lyme, you're going to have inflammation. You have H. pylori, you're going to have inflammation. If you have stress of taking care of a loved one, you're going to have inflammation. But there are other sources of inflammation as well. And of course, it wouldn't be a Dr. E podcast if we weren't talking you know, about nutrition for at least a moment. And you know by now, you know that you are what you eat. And that's because food is just a lump of information. It tells your body what to do. And some foods have healing messages and some food have inflammatory messages. They're just a bunch of code like a computer. And which code you put in your mouth tells your body what to do. So for example, if you're someone with a gluten sensitivity and you have a slice of pizza, you just send your, a message to your body that says, hey, I'm ready to play the inflammation game. Let's go. You just set off the alarm and asking the immune system to go wild. And that's true for anything you're sensitive to. Like if you're sensitive to dairy or nightshades, whatever your list is, if you decide to eat it, you're sending a message that you're ready to go for a round of inflammation, right? And that inflammation is going to trigger a lot of stuff in your body. But it's not just food you're sensitive to. It's the entire standard American diet. The sugary snacks, the greasy fast food, the high fructose corn syrup. All of it sends a message to mess with my insulin, mess with my hormones, and trigger the inflammation. Let's go. When you eat that, you are basically sending a message, I want to have an inflammation party. So think about that next time you order. Now, this brings us to the gut, right? 70%, actually some people say closer to 90% of our immune system is in our gut. Why? You know why that is? It makes so much sense to design so smart because we put the external world into our body through our gut, right? Like we eat something externally full of stuff. We put it into our body. So the defense has to be in the GI, right? It just makes sense that this entire immune system, most of it is sitting in the area that it's the most exposed to the external world. So when we're talking about our gut, we're talking about two things, the gut lining, like if you have leaky gut and your microbiome, which is the bacteria that live in it. And problem is either of these can disrupt your immune system because your immune system is in your belly, right? So if something's upsetting the balance in your belly, your immune system is a mess. Now, I did a whole other episode on leaky gut and microbiome. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, please find those episodes because if I talk about it here, this episode will never end. So make sure you get that. So the point I'm making is in addition to the inflammation that comes with the infection or the toxins, your belly, if your belly is on fire, you just added more fuel to the inflammation. Okay, you just made the inflammation worse. So a lot of people ask, how do you diagnose autoimmunity? Like, how do you know? And figuring out if someone has an autoimmune disease can be really tricky. This is because the signs that our body might be attacking itself can look a lot like other symptoms. Like, I'm tired. Is it anemia? Is it just I didn't get enough sleep, right? So a lot of these kind of general symptoms look like other things. So if you think you have an autoimmune issue, make an appointment with your primary care, but also make an appointment with a rheumatologist. Rheumatologists are the providers that specialize in autoimmunity. And there are a lot of blood tests, too much to talk about here, each one's specific for an autoimmune issue. But here's the part that they don't tell you. You may have an autoimmune issue for years and still have normal labs. Okay, so just because the labs are normal doesn't mean you're not unwell. It takes a really long time for the blood markers to catch up. So you can be in a state of pre-disease, meaning you feel not well, you have all the symptoms, but every time you go to your medical provider, they tell you you're fine. That's okay. Don't get mad, okay? Because I'm going to tell you right here, right now, your symptoms still count. Okay? You are still sick, even if they can't find the proper name for your diagnosis. You don't need that validation. This is your validation. Your symptoms are the validation. What you're going to do is work on removing the triggers and the inflammation to calm this down, which brings me to the next section of how to manage autoimmunity. Now, notice I didn't say how to cure autoimmunity. You can't really cure it, right? You have this genetic predisposition, something triggers it, and inflammation. What you could do is manage it, minimize the flare-ups. Sometimes the flare-ups disappear where it feels cured. But if you reintroduce a trigger or inflammation, it comes right back. Now, remember this part. If you have an autoimmune disease, it affects a specific tissue, right? Your joints, your gut, your thyroid. And conventional treatment is going to focus on your joints, your gut, your thyroid. Medication for your thyroid, medication for your gut, medication for your skin. 
And that's not wrong. Of course, you should take it. Take it, take it, take it. Please don't ever say, I tell you not to take meds. But it's not the whole issue, right? Because the thyroid may be like the diagnosis, but the issue is your whole system, your whole immune system. It's not just one body part. So when we talk about managing autoimmunity, we're talking about managing the whole system. If autoimmunity is genetics plus trigger plus inflammation, there's nothing we could do about your genes, but there's plenty you can do to address the triggers and the inflammation. Now, in this case, we start reversed, okay? We have to start with your gut. You have to start your nutrition. There is no point in getting tested for Lyme and mold, any other hidden infection, if you're still out here eating burgers, fries, and a Coke. It doesn't make sense. You have to prepare and calm your immune system, right? And your journey to calming inflammation and reversing autoimmunity starts with what's on your plate, okay? It is really important, okay? So the obvious, yes, I know it's obvious. Ditch the junk. Know your food triggers and don't have them. How many people come to me and say, I think I'm lactose intolerant. Is there a test on it? No. Uh, What happens when you drink milk? My stomach hurts for two days. There's your test. Who needs a test? Okay, know your food triggers and don't ignore them, okay? Don't force yourself to eat the things that you know bother you. Eat real foods, not processed foods, not foods with 400 ingredients in them, real food. Stay hydrated. You need water to detoxify. You need water to get things through. Stay hydrated. Foods, anti-inflammatory foods, right? Some foods are like fire extinguishers, turmeric, ginger, greens, fish with omega-3. All of that helps reduce the flames of inflammation. And of course, heal your gut. Not going to go into that. I did a whole thing in leaky gut and microbiome, but it's basically the five R's. Remove, replace, re-inoculate, repair, rebalance. Get that going, okay? Now, once your belly is healed, now you're ready for the fun stuff. Fun stuff, Okay. Now you're ready for checking for hidden infections, the Lyme, the H. pylori. This is when the specialized tests come in. I did an episode on mold. I did an episode on Lyme. Check them out. I even talk about what tests to use. Decrease your doxa burden. Be mindful of your environment. Limit your exposure to chemicals. Limit your exposure to cleaning products. Start using organic products. Start ventilating your living spaces. Reduce your stress. I know there's no such thing as a stress-free life, but you have to remember that stress affects your immune system. And if you already have an autoimmune issue, this is really important. Whatever it takes, yoga, biofeedback, massage, how about just a deep breath? Like how about just a pause and a deep breath? Sometimes that's all you need. And sometimes you need your cat to meow to you because that's what my cat's doing right now. And then consider supplements wisely. Okay. While food should be your primary source of nutrients, certain supplements can offer additional support. Now, depending on what's going on, you're going to need like targeted supplements. It's not a one size fits all. But here are some of my favorites that just about everyone needs. Glutathione. Glutathione, glutathione, glutathione. It's one of the strongest antioxidants, which helps clean out your toxins. And it protects your mitochondria. It regulates inflammation. Now, some of you out there who are are struggling with mold, glutathione might not be right for you, but this is kind of general. It really should be specific to each person, but I want to put it out there. Vitamin D. It's like a global concern how many people have low vitamin D. And this vitamin D is not just skin and bones. It helps protect autoimmune diseases. Curcumin. Curcumin comes from turmeric, is a natural spice, and it calms things down, helps with pain, swelling, and autoimmune flares. Resveratrol is another antioxidant and slows autoimmune disease, calms down inflammation. But remember, supplements are supplemental. They're not replacing a healthy diet, and they're definitely not going to help you if you're not eating healthy. You know how I feel about that. So quick recap. Your autoimmune diseases comes from your genes, trigger, inflammation. To manage your autoimmune issues, you have to get rid of your triggers and lower your inflammation. And remember, that your labs may still be normal even though you are sick. You know your body, and you are your own best advocate. Knowledge is your most powerful weapon. This is why I'm so passionate about bringing you all of this information because it's my mission to equip you with the tools to take the driver's seat when it comes to your own health and healing. And this is why I call it the new method because you always knew there was a better way. I'll see you guys next week.